Hey everyone, welcome back to CryptoCash. Thank you so much again for joining me here. Hope you're having a fantastic day. Let's take another look here at ICP, see what's going on. Uh, this coin is actually performing very well, bounced off that $11 range, uh, and basically performing as expected. And it's funny, because the last time I covered this, I mentioned it could come down to that low $11 mark. And um, oddly enough, I got a few trolls that actually mentioned that uh, it's BS and it's never gonna pull back. So just you know, friendly advice if that's what you're saying or perhaps that's the kind of person that you are. You like to troll YouTube channels and tell the people that they're wrong. Um, I guess I was I was right, but also on the same accord, you were right too. Everyone's right, depending on how you look at it. And the overall sense of me doing what I do here is to help educate you on how to properly navigate these these types of ebbs and flows. Uh, we do have, however, just kind of throwing it out there, a potential head and shoulders pattern here forming. This kind of goes head, hand in hand with the pattern I have already mentioned that is playing out here so far with the pullback and the leg up. So this may very well be, just pre be prepared for this here. This could very well be just like, you know, the beginning of a, an ABC pattern. We might see lower lows here, depending on how Bitcoin behaves. Bitcoin's performing fairly well, uh, but also performing in a similar fashion here too. It has this ABC pattern potentially uh, going to play out here depending on how the next 24 hours occur. So a lot of weird little things going on right now, some false positives for sure. So just be careful kind of taking high leverage trades right now. It's the important thing. And just make sure that you're using um, you know, low leverage or low position size, something to help sustain these kind of uh, insane market move movements, right? There's a lot of a lot of volatility and ICP is definitely one of those right now, especially since it broke through this $10 range. Now that we're up here, we're kind of like in local price discovery in a lot of ways. And ICP isn't really sure how to perform. <laughs> so it's normal and very standard when you break through a key level resistance. So summary, in summary, $10, very close approximate, like 970, 980, is that, that next area of support. So just know a lot of this liquidation on the downside shouldn't occur because ICP broke through that key level threshold. So unless Bitcoin really makes a run towards the 80K range, I think we're probably safe to say we're over $10 or maintaining above that. We look at liquidation here. We are kind of in the middle of this range. So just keep in mind, there's no like significant indication here saying it's going to go up or down because of that. There's some cases where liquidation will do that, but for the most part, it's not something you really want to concern yourself with. And um, you know you you can overanalyze liquidation. The key, I think, is to look at patterns on the charts to identify kind of um, overall set situations when the liquidation levels are so far away. Okay, not to say we don't have any. In fact, if we zoom into the twelve hour, we'll probably see there are some local ones. Then that might be something to focus on. But from a macro perspective, there's not a tremendous amount of um, you know motivation to go up or down. We're kind of in a big range, but we can see eleven eighty to twelve dollars is that potential next area of concentration of the upside, and then of course, uh, 11 to 11.20. Okay, so like 20 cent ranges above and below the price. We're technically closer to the upper level here, so further upside makes sense. Pending Bitcoin doesn't make a run down lower. Okay, that's just kind of how that works. Okay, so that's kind of the, the foundation there. Now that we got that, uh, <laughs> that, that understood, let's go ahead and take a look here. Well, to, to clarify, we got a pretty significant fair value gap as low as 950. Again, don't shoot the messenger. I'm just really telling you here that that is an area of, of consideration if the price were to pull back aggressively. Usually we'll see a pivot or a bounce off that. And the reason why the fair value gap exists is because that's, again, the, the local high here, right? 950 was that highest point in which, uh, you know, ICP was able to close on the daily. And we haven't even retested that level again. So... A lot of times, fair value gaps or CME gaps uh, for Bitcoin futures, they'll oftentimes get filled inevitably. So we may very well see a retest of the 10 to 950 range, just based on that one thing. Now, a lot of support below us doesn't mean we can't still pull back. So we're, got, we're still good in the support levels there. We're right here at 70 in the RSI. Usually you see the price pull back or, or retrace a little bit when this happens. In other words, we're coming up to a resistance range and it's losing momentum. And it makes sense with the, you know, you could say triple top or more so head and shoulders. ICP does look like it's going to pull back. Uh, just again, in that sense, we're going to look at some other things too to make sure, but stochastic pulling back here, that's usually an, an early indication. We may see the price uh, retrace. We got to recognize too, though, we are in somewhat of a bullish type of rectangle pattern here. And these are also more likely to break to the upside, right? So a bit of a conflict there. And again, a lot of charts are telling us right now that the price is going to go in different directions depending on what coin you're trading. There's not like a lot of definitive, the trend is up right now. We're at this little this little shift in momentum for a lot of coins and it, it can um, it can be very difficult to trade. So I oftentimes just avoid trading those situations unless there's like a definitive direction. Uh, me personally, I just analyzed SUI, looking pretty strong, bullish pennant pattern, um, likelihood of breaking out, pending Bitcoin doesn't make a run towards 90K again which it could still do, by the way. It's, it's looking like it wants to ABC down. 
Anyways, let's look at here on the four hour time frame. recognize that we're back up over the 20 day SMA. That's a good sign. Overall situation here is positive. All moving average below the price. We're over 50 in the RSI. Money flow index is fairly low, but that does take into consideration the last 14 candles, which did imply, you know, does tell us that we had a lot of selling pressure. So that I don't, I wouldn't read into the money flow index too much here. We got a MACD convergence. We got stochastic swinging up. There's a lot of reasons why we're more likely to break up than down here. And you just got to recognize that we are kind of getting into a resistance range. So if you see the local high here, the most recent high before this guy, that could be the new resistance level. So I, I'm speculating 1180, maybe a pivot point where the price action to turn around. It's a possibility. Uh, but between now and then, we do have some decently bullish signs here on the four hour time frame. The hourly is also reflecting uh, a very unique circumstance here. In other words, this is one of those situations where you want to wait for confirmation before you take a trade. In other words, a closure above this, uh, this little support, like 1170 would be helpful, mainly because that would put us above the cloud. The conversion line is, uh, or sorry, conversion line is above the baseline. That's good, good momentum. Lagging spans free and clear. That's this guy right here. Uh, we just need the, the, the price action to be a little bit higher to give us confirmation that it's going to be able to hold and continue further up. Okay. So again, weird little transitions. A lot of coins are kind of in this kind of strange, like <laughs> this gray area where there's no like definitive direction. So usually the best recommendation in situations like this is to wait for confirmation um, or just to kind of sit on the sidelines, grab some popcorn and just uh, enjoy the show because it's an interesting little market the way that it is right now. And Bitcoin, if it if it holds the 95 to 96k range, I think we'll see alts continue to you know surge throughout the weekend. But between now and then, a lot of things can happen. We got to pay close attention. So to me, until we get a closure up here, I'm not super convinced. This is also slightly bearish, where we're retesting that ascending trend line, and we're more likely to break down as well because of it. So once more. It's almost like a 50/50 split on where the price is going to go up or down. So I know it sucks that you just you know quote unquote wasted your time trying to figure this out. But the truth is it's not a waste of time because we made a good decision to not necessarily force a trade right now. And that's usually very helpful in the trading market. And if you're kind of new to the channel or just new in trading in general, um, the best, most successful traders are those who are patient and wait for confirmation. Again, it's easier for me to say that because I do that. But if you look at my track record, I converted 75, 80% on average. And again, it's not a brag by any stretch. It's just kind of letting you know that Patience is, is important, right? So if you take a look here, for example, I have um, you know trade signals that I send out. Um, Tau, for example, we took a long position five days ago, 56%. It was going up while Bitcoin was going down, and we got 42% from 98K down to 91.5 for Bitcoin. So again, it's not perfect by any stretch. I hit stop losses once in a while, um, but you'll hit less of them if you wait for confirmation. You don't force a trade in situations like this. The truth is you're going to miss out a lot of opportunities when you do that though. So if FOMO is not really a strong suit for you, you maybe you just want to continue to do so, but you'll probably realize over time that it's not very lucrative to FOMO in. Anyways, I hope that made sense. I described that correctly. Don't forget to hit the like button, comment below. Join us over at BitUnix, folks. They have awesome prize pools monthly. Next month, there's a magnificent, a very large deposit bonus. And then of course, jump, jump on over to our Twitter, Telegram, and Discord. I provide you with out charts and relevant information that uh, I think is helpful for you. So it's all there for you. Hope you have a good one though. Thanks again for your time. We'll see you soon. Take care.